got a lecture activity that we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to set up magazine grids. This is worth 15 points. We'll set up a two column grid and a three column grid like you see here. Uh, we're going to have subheads, a folio, some wraparound text. I've got instructions here how to divide a shape into a grid and you will name your file, last name, first name, grid. There's some setup files here for you. And just a note, this will not be necessarily the grid that you will use on your magazine design, but it's just to teach you how to set up a grid. If I were working in InDesign, I would use margins and columns and guides, but I'll just use guides in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go to Adobe Illustrator and here, is a view of what your layouts might be. We'll have a, for your magazine, a cover. It'll have a masthead, title of your magazine. It might have a tagline that goes along with it as well. Be some compelling images, maybe uh, the feature article title and a, another article or two that would be there on your cover. You'll have your title spread. A spread is two facing pages. Rec recto and verso, left page is verso, right page is recto. We'll have a large creative custom title on this spread here for the name for your article. You have compelling images, a, a byline who wrote the story, a deck which is like the synopsis of what this article is about, a lead less important for this project. That's where the body text starts. You'll have a folio. A lot of times on a title spread if it's got, say, a full photo on this page, maybe you only have a folio on the right page, the recto page. You'll have uh, captions for what the image is. So maybe you have an, an image of a piece of artwork or architecture or design, and you would have a caption that would say what that is. And then our subsequent spread is our body text spread. Again, two pages. It'll have the main text of the article. It will have subheads not Greeking, I don't want lorem ipsum, so they will say some real words. And then you'll have uh, pull quotes. Uh, pull quote is a interesting type pulled from the body text. So if you see a pull quote, you would find that somewhere in the body text here. And then a folio, which would be the page numbers. I'm gonna start off by making a new document. I'll go new. Adobe Illustrator, I'll click the print preset and I'll tell my measurements to be inches, eight and a half by 11 vertical, a regular size, but then I'm gonna do, I'm doing two spreads that are two pages in a row. So I could do this or I could say, all right, I'll have the width be 17 inches, which is how I'm gonna do it. And I'll have three artboards. If you're gonna do an extra page or an extra spread, you just add more artboards. What I'll end up with here is, and I'll go ahead and put a, an eighth inch bleed, 0.125, that's industry standard bleed. Just click the up arrow. It'll be CMYK more mode. Uh, you can click more here. I'm gonna make my pages just be arranged in a straight line like this. So I'll click that and then click create document and you'll see I have three pages in a row. My cover page is too big. I'll get the artboard tool and click on that. And then I'm just gonna pull over until I get at the midpoint. And if I can't see where that is, I get a little smart guide, that pink line there that tells me, and then there's also a measurement that tells me I'm exactly, it says W or width 8.5. And so I change the width. And then you'll also, oh, I'm off just the slightest amount. I'll tell that to be 8.5 right up here and hit return. So now I've got a cover. I've got an artboard for my title spread. I've got an artboard for my body text spread. Um, on this lecture activity, so that's how you might set up your magazine. And then you would uh, get guides and say, I'll have a, a middle you know, divider between pages. Uh, for this lecture activity, though, we're not doing the cover, we're not doing the body text spread. For this one, we only have one spread, and that's going to be our body text spread, and we're going to set that up with grids. So the first thing I want to do is pull some guides to set up my gutter very first, and I need to have some rulers to pull guides. Command-R is the key command, but you can see that under 
view, rulers, show rulers, command R, control R on a PC. And I'll zoom up a little bit so I can see my measurements easily here. I'll pull a vertical guide and I'll put that right at 8.5. So there's my gutter. And I think I want to have a half inch on either side of that. So I'll pull one to eight and I'll pull one to nine. I've got my got my gutter set up. I won't have any important text go beyond this point or start before that point. On my edges, I could do it a couple of ways. I, I could use just the guides and say, all right, I want to do a three quarter inch guide. Um, and that will give me a good amount of space so that I'm not too close to the edge. Uh, maybe you might want to say, um, I'll, I could use a tool to do that. I'll pull a rectangle here and um, just off a little bit. I want a 0 0.75 5 by 0.75. You can see right here, and that'll give me exactly a 0.75 shape. So sometimes it's a, a good way to do measurements is to get a shape. I'm intersecting there. That's aligning. Then I can pull a guide over here and say, there's my, I'm right to my edge. And then I could come over to this bottom right side and do the same thing. Um, you can do that. I, I probably wouldn't. I would probably just use guides and look up at the, the router to do this. But um, this is just one way you can do a guide. And so I'm making sure I'm on 0.75. So I've got my basic margins and gutter set up. I did a three quarter inch margin all the way around the outside and I did a half inch and a half inch gutter in between. So that, that'll look good. Now I'm going to get a shape here and within this area of my margins, I'll drag a shape. Got a green shape here and then I'll do the same thing. I'll just hold option and shift and drag and I've got two shapes here. And I'm gonna turn these into guides. So I will go to Object, Path, Split into Grid, and then I will choose, I'm going to do a two column grid here. So I'll do two columns. If I click Preview, you'll see a little line here. And if I went ahead and clicked OK, you see what that does is it's like the Pathfinder tool divide it. I'll undo that. It just splits it. But I need a gutter between those. So I'll go again to Object, Path, Split into Grid, and I'll do two columns, and I want to have a gutter here. See, it says zero inches. And so I'll make a quarter inch gutter, and there you go. I've got two columns that are each, they're, they're grouped, but they're separate columns. And then I'll do the same thing here, but I'm gonna do a three column grid. This will not necessarily be the, the grid you would use for your magazine, but I'm just teaching to make grids here. I'll go on this one to object, path, make sure it's selected. If it's not selected, you go to object, path, and oh, it's all grayed out. So make sure you're selected, object, path, split into grid, and I'll do three columns on this one. Again, give myself a quarter inch uh, space between, and there I have three columns. Now I can use these shapes to add type. So you could import type, place type, or you could copy and paste type from another document, um, or you could just click on this with the type tool. So I'm going to click on this and see what happens when I get the type tool. I hover over the shape. It becomes the area type tool. See right here, area type tool. It will look like that one. And Illustrator Smart, if I click on a line, it will know that it wants the path type tool. If I hover over a closed shape, it will do the area area type tool. And this will default to whatever type I have set. So I'll go to Command T to open up the character palette. And I'm at Myriad Pro, that's default. Um, and it's gonna be 12 point, that's pretty big. I'll click that and what I get is it fills with lorem ipsum dolor set amet. Lorem ipsum is Greeking and it is not real type, it's placeholder type. You see the Myriad Pro, it's 12 point over 14.4 points leading. 
And that's pretty massive for a magazine. If you're doing a children's magazine, uh, maybe that would be okay. But we, we wouldn't really want that big of type, most likely in an art magazine. So what I'm going to do instead of that, I'm going to do some preset of the type. I'll pick a, a different font, maybe go to like uh, Palatino 10 over 14, 10 point type, 14 point letting. You can set the color if you want at this point. Black is uh, has high contrast with white, so you'll always have the best readability with high contrast. I'll leave that black. Now, when I come in with my type tool, I can click and you see what it did is added a different font. It, it made it Palatino. Um, and now I'm going, oh, that's uh, so much nicer than this big clunky type. So what I'm gonna do is hit the letter I. I is the eyedropper click on this type and look what it did it it copied that type there and notice this type here ends what if I were to select all of this type command a select copy and then I'll hit return at the end of this and paste I get a little red uh, plus right here and that means overset text it means there's more type in this column than is fitting. And so if this were real type and not placeholder type, it would be right in the middle of the narrative and then it would cut off and stop. So we wouldn't want that. So what we need to do is shred the type. And so I'm going to do that. But I think first what I'll do is while I'm still in this type mode, I'll go ahead and click and click and click. So now I have uh, six, let's see, one, two, three, four, five columns of type. And since it's lorem ipsum, it, it you know, is, it doesn't really make sense because we can't read it. But if I want to thread my type, I just, with the regular selection tool, click on this little plus, and then I'll get a cursor that looks like a type insertion place cursor. I'll come up here and click at the top. And what happens, I get this line. That's threaded text. So that type ends at the end of this column and it flows up onto this. And so what happens if I were to say, shorten this column here. So you see this starts with EU. And if I wanted it to maybe have a shorter column here, as I pull it down, you see that type flows up to the next column. And so that's threaded type. You always in a magazine or uh, something with a continuative narrative, always want to click and then come up to the next column, click and thread your type. And so I'm gonna thread all this type and if you click and it doesn't turn to that cursor, it means I miss. So I'll try again. There we go. And try again. And then one more time, I need to thread this type. Click. If you double click on it, you'll get an extra little, it'll duplicate it. And so I didn't want to do that. And so if it were, say, type that was in a specific custom shape, it would make a duplicate of that shape. So, so we don't want to do that. I'll click there. And then I'll come up and thread it to that. So you can see all these blue lines. That's, that means this text will flow into the next column here. So that's fun. I think what I want to do is put a photo in here. And so I'm going to pull down and I'll just pull a random space here and I'll pull it back up in a minute. Okay, I want to put an image in here. And so I'm going to go to File, Place. I have in the Source Images folder, I've got GC Barcelona versus Athletic. And I will click that, and you see my cursor now has an image in it. I could bleed that image all the way off the edge if I wanted. If I'm going to go off the edge, I would go to this red bleed line. And I think in this instance, I'm just going to take it to the margin. And with grids, I could, this is a two column grid, but I could go like one and one and a half here and run small type up that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to scale this to fill that margin. And so there I've got an image and then I should have a caption for this image. So I'm going to just click with the type tool and say, this is a caption of the soccer scene above. And Probably I don't want to have the same exact type that I'm for a caption as I have for my body text because it's a different voice. I'll just make that be an italic. And there's a caption. I've got a 
image, I've got a caption, maybe I would have a photo credit um, on the side. They're discreet and small, they're a legal requirement, usually they wouldn't be italic if they're on its side, um, but they're often smaller. So I'll do a, a photo credit, even though it's a, even though I didn't. And so I'll put that on the side there. I've got a photo credit and I've got a caption and I want to, maybe I'll have a drop cap. Maybe I'll put some uh, subheads in here. Maybe I'll put an image in here, but I need to have type a line. And so I just pulled these randomly. And if you look, if I were to pull a guide, see the baseline here where this type fits, doesn't align there, and that looks sloppy. So we never want to have a line do this sort of thing, where it's here and then it jumps up. Column to column, we want the type to align, and page to page, we want the type to align. So I'm going to pull a guide, say, to this baseline right here, and I need this type to align to that as well. So I'll get my direct selection tool, and I had pulled just randomly down to fit that photo in. I've got plenty of space now, so I'll select these top lines and pull up a little bit. And as I did that, I uh, just got lucky, but they're aligning. If I, if I wasn't lucky, I'll try again. And oh, there, look, I'm off a little bit. And now I'm off a little bit that way. So I would do a little bit of nudging until it aligns like I have there. So that's fun. I like that. And this is about soccer. So I think I'm going to do a drop cap here. And I could use the um, touch type tool. But what I think I'll do is just uh, type a big S because it's about soccer. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do a drop cap. And when we do drop caps, we want to align with the baseline, the bottom of the letter. So I'll have the top. Sometimes you'll see drop caps or enlarged initial caps float out to the side, not too often, but you can see that. Sometimes you'll see an initial cap float up above, but often you'll see them align at the cap height, and then you'll want to align them with the baseline. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to go a little bit up below, and just a little bit more here. On letters like S's, O's, letters that have a curvature, we usually will go just below the baseline. And so that's good, but the type's running off of it. I could um, do a text wrap on that, or I could do this. I'm gonna, And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my Add Anchor Point tool, and I'm going to click in an anchor point, click an anchor point. And there I've got a couple of anchor points. I'll get my Direct Selection tool, letter A. I'm going to grab this side of this uh, text box and slide it just a bit to the right. And you see I have a nice text wrap. It's a little snug here. I'll pull it. Sometimes you want to, if you have a letter that cuts in, you'll want to add extra anchor points and say, okay, I need this section here. You know, this, if, if the letter, you know, was like a letter uppercase A, you'd, you'd tuck that type in a little bit more. Since this is fairly straight, I'll, I'll just leave that. But I've got a a nice uh, initial cap or versal that is a drop cap dropping to the third baseline. That's pretty. I like that. And in shortening these columns, I've made sure that I align baselines from column to column. Now I'm going to add um, some an image, another image of a soccer player. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to add a drop. Sh uh, a cap. I'm going to add a. I'm going to add a, some subheads. I'm going to add a pull quote. I'm going to add some, a folio. So I think I'll add a folio next, and I'm just going to grab this text here and pull it down. And for your folio, I'll do that with uh, Option Held, so it will duplicate. Um, for a folio, and I want this to align, say, with this um, edge there, and I'm going to choose a, a different font. I'll go with Futura, 
and I'll go with uh, Futura Condensed Medium, make it a little bit bigger. And so that could be my folio. And so the folio will have the page number and it will have the name of the magazine usually. If it's a book, sometimes it'll have the title of the book here. And then on the, on the right-hand page, it would have the title of the chapter. And so with page numbering, um, the even page is always on the left and the odd page number is always on the right. So I'm going to say that this is page 22 and maybe I'll even change that font. So I'll go to Futura um, Old, make that bigger. And then I'll make this type, I'll call this um, Soccer Magazine. And sometimes um, it could be a different color, different things. Sometimes you'll see a, a folio, uh, the page number in a shape. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to come over to this page. Uh, I think what I'll do is just hold Option and copy that over. And to make sure it stays on a straight line, I'll hold Shift. And I'll go right to this margin. And I want the page number to be on the right-hand side here. So what I'll do first, I'll go to Paragraph and tell this to align right. Now I'll pull that over to that margin. And then I'll get that page number, which is going to be an odd number now, the next number. So I have page 22 and page 23. I'll paste page 23 there. So now I have a folio. Uh, folios are often on the bottom left and right. On occasion, you'll see them in the middle. On rare occasion, you'll see a folio on the sides. It really depends on your magazine style and layout. And so I'm gonna put some a pull quote in. I'm gonna put some um, an image in. I've got a soccer player here. Um, and I'm gonna grab that soccer player. And you can see he's already, uh, I've got soccer player mask. I grab him and paste him into this document. Copy, paste him into my new document. And here's the soccer player. I need to make sure that he is above the text. And he's got a, uh, a mask on him, see, so that he's, um, if the mask was turned off, you see there's a background there. So I've got a clipping mask, which is object, clipping mask, make, command seven, and then option command seven will release it. And so I've got a clipping mask on my soccer player here. I'm gonna put him there, maybe make him a little bit bigger. I think I'll rotate him a little bit. And he's just a touch bigger than I wanted. So I'll shrink him down a little bit. There, I've got a soccer player and I'll select him. Um, and he's going to be kicking a, a pull quote. So I think I'll uh, get a circle here and ellipse, and I'll get that right in between these columns. And I will hold Option and drag, and I have a, I'll make that an orange circle. So I have this orange circle here, and then um, I will tell that circle to be Object, text wrap, make. And see what happens, it wraps to that shape. It's a fairly wide wrap there. So I'll go to object, text wrap, options. So I've got a 16 point, um, I can click that down. I'll go to, um, if I get rid of um, 10 points, I say six points. Okay, that's pretty small, that's pretty tight. Um, I'll go up to nine point wrap. I like that and click okay. And you see, it looks pretty nice on this right side. It's tightly wrapped to that. But on the left side, see how loose that is. And so I think what I want to do on all my type, so I have all my, all my type selected. Oops, I didn't select that one. And so I just hit all my type for a second. And I'm going to go Option, Command, 3. 
Now it's all selected. I'm going to tell that type to not be flush left, not be centered. You'll never have centered type generally in a magazine column. I'll tell type to be justified. Justify means it's flush on the left side and flush on the right side of the column as well. And you have several settings for justified. You have justified with the last line, which is often a shorter amount of text. Be aligned to the left. That's the most common. Justified with the last line aligned to the center. Uh, more rare, you'd have justified aligned with the last line aligned right. And then we have justify all lines. And that one uh, takes the most finessing to get that to work because you may have a short amount of type on the last line and it's going to force it to go the whole line width. So I'm just going to go to this one here, justified with the last line aligned right, and see now what it's done with this type here. See how nicely it's wrapped around that? But now I have some problems. I've got some ugly um, gaps here, and that's going to be problematic. I have to fix that, but I'm going to be doing, since all of this text is flowed, and I'm going to be adding more, I'm going to do a wrap around this guy. I'm going to add some subheads. It's not going to um, be the same, so I'll select my guy here. I'll go to Object, Text Wrap, Make. And he's got a text wrap now. Again, it's too big of a text wrap, so I'll go to Object, Text Wrap, Options. And I had liked that nine-point um, wrap I did on the ball. I can click Preview to see how that looks. That's nice. And click OK. So with a text wrap like that, you've got, a, you've got some areas you have to watch, little fussy things like that, um, like words like that. Um, as you move your guy, See, I get more type in there. Okay, that's that's a little bit more acceptable. I've got some short lines there. See, as I move it, that stuff reflows. That's why, and now if you look, I've got other problems here, but not the same problems I had before. Um, but I, I like the soccer player now. But wherever I move him, I move him over here. It's going to wrap to that area, and it's going to dynamically move all the all the text for the whole image. For the whole document. So I've got the soccer player kicking a soccer ball. I'm going to add some uh, subheads. And what subheads do is they bring attention to the copy. Uh, it's a lot of copy to read and maybe the, the viewer is getting, reader is getting a little bit um, bored with the read and, and they're starting to wander. And so a subhead will recapture their attention and get them excited about it. And it'll make it more bite-sized pieces. So you have sentences and you have paragraphs and then multiple paragraphs you know, if, a, if a certain part of the narrative will fall under a subhead. And so what subheads do um, is subheads recapture the viewer's attention. So I'm gonna just copy that text that I've already typed out. Subheads recapture the viewer's attention and all um, you, you would never have a subhead at the beginning and it wouldn't fall too close here uh, but you might get a subhead say it'll always be at the end of a paragraph since I'm dealing with lorem ipsum it doesn't really matter I could make the paragraph be wherever I want but I'll I'll click right here at the end of that paragraph and I'll hit return zoom in there I'm going to put my subhead right in this area here. So there's my subhead, and I'll hit return again. So I've got a, a fair amount of space, but now look what's happened. I'm no longer aligning with the type. So that's a problem. And then it's not aligning here as well. See, see my alignment here? The, that type's aligning. That type's aligning on the baseline. Uh, if there were type here, it would be aligning, but the guys in front of it were aligning. No, oh, we are. We're aligning all along there. See that? Great. But then what's happening here? Am I aligning down here? And I'll pull a guide down, and I'm aligning right here, 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 and I've got a problem here. Why? Because my subhead letting is off, and it's it's throwing off the the alignment there. So I'm going to select this type here, go to my character palette, and so I'll just click up. And I'm looking at this line here, 
and that's a pretty massive gap between. Um, so maybe I'll I'll click a few points of letting out. I'll go 18 points there, and then on this one I'll add a few points of letting. But I'm looking at this guide right here, making sure this type all aligns, and so I'll add a little bit of letting there and there. This baseline is aligning with this line, it's lining with this line, this line, this line. And so you'll want to do that. But when you add subheads, you'll often run into problems like that where you where you have to uh, adjust your letting so that because it's bigger type, it's uh, often a different color, and then you'll you'll need to make sure that it doesn't throw your letting off elsewhere. Okay, and I've got some um, some text here. I'll just copy here. Pull quotes are pulled from the body copy, and so what that means is this copy right here that I'm putting in this circle. If I were to read the body text here, I would find that copy somewhere in the body text. Of course, my body text is lorem ipsum, so it's it's not really there. But I've got a, a pull quote here, and so often a reader will be looking at a magazine, and they'll see a pull quote, and generally it's an interesting comment, and you'll say, oh, I want to know about that, and so that'll engage the reader just like the subheads do. And so the last thing I need to do on this, I've got I've got captions, I've got a photo credit, I've got a folio, I have subheads, I have pull quotes, but because I'm doing some wrap, uh, text wraps, I'm getting some bad uh, spacing problems. And so, see this here, um, I've got a big gap here. And if you're in lorem ipsum, then there's no excuse to have bad word spacing because it's nonsense words. You could just add a few letters, add a few words, and you can close those gaps up. But if it's real, let's say this is a real word, two real words here, well, I would look at it and go, well, I've got a, a short word here, and a short word here, and I've got a hyphenated word here. What if I were to, so you look several column, uh, several lines up and say, what if I were to go to character and to tracking? What if I were to add some some tracking to that to spread that out a little bit? And you don't want to get it, you know, too odd, but I'll add a little tracking to that. And as I do that, I knocked the next word that was hyphenated down. And so now I close that gap just with a little bit of tracking. And so what you really want to not do is have a really loose line like this and then a line that's super tight underneath it because that just, so see, I have super tight type and super loose type. So that's going to be ugly. So use the tracking sparingly and judiciously, make it look good. But often it's just a matter of, if I pull this line down a little bit, if I pull this, uh, you know, if I if I were to move my shape here, it's going to reflow the type as well. So I could nudge that. I can pull a line down from another uh, line above, or pull a word up from another uh, line be beneath or above. You're you're looking a couple of lines above and below, and then again, if you have a gap and there's no short words, and we don't want a ton of hyphens either, um, you can um, be, you know, be careful with hyphens. You don't want to see hyphen, hyphen, hyphen. But I've got a big word spacing there. That's not very attractive, so I'll add a, whoops, that's uh, not tracking. I'll add a little tracking to that, and that will close that space up a little bit, look a little bit better. So finesse your type. Justified type looks great, but it doesn't uh, doesn't look good if you don't take the time to make it look good. And so there I have a two-column grid. I have a three-column grid. Um, you can see four-column grids. When we did our separations of, of the shape here, we could have also gone to, we're, go, we're going to um, split into grid here. I, I only did columns, but I could have also done rows. And so I'll, I'll show you what that's about here. So I've got 
columns and rows and I would have two and three there that divides it up into grid. So if I'm say doing something where I have a series of photos, that's a good way to divide a shape up. I don't really need that. And so I'll throw that away. So that's how to divide up in Adobe Illustrator, make margins, make drop caps, make justified type look good, make subheads, make text wraps, make pull quotes, captions, credits, folios. And turn this in as a PDF, and we will call this last name, first name, grid, and then the date you turn it in.